WVTC Radio Detroit. You can find us on Facebook, YouTube, our website, www.wvtcradio.com, or download our WVTC app from the Play Store for Android users and the App Store for iPhone users. to WVTCRadio.com and the Sandy Rose Show with your host, for Sandy Andrew Rose, users, and where you'll hear the finest in gospel users. music and information you can use. The Sandy Rose Show can be heard every Tuesday from 5 to 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So get your pencil, paper, and your shouting shoes as you listen to today's broadcast. Why not text a friend and tell them to listen to for the creation of this vast universe. You reach down with your omnipotent hand unto the great abyss of nothingness and threw nothing out into nowhere and nothing became something. What a world we live in. Look at this world. It's gigantic and it's grand Mountain heights with scintillating views, valleys scooped out by eternal hands, rolling prairies, running brooks, rippling streams blessed with gold, silver, diamonds, and all kinds of precious minerals. My soul sings when I look and see how God splashed the multitude of stars kissing the heavens like diamonds sprinkled against black velvet and hanging like trapezes from the roof of God's gymnasium. You place the moon and announce for the world to hear, this is the queen of the night and she has never stopped shining. The oceans whose depths have to be measured in miles. The sun has never run out of gas. The stars keep coming out to play. The seasons still march in splendid succession. My God is real. He is from everlasting to everlasting. He even looked around one day to see what he had created and said, that's good. And one day, when he brings everything to consummation and a glorious fruition, when he comes with a shout of acclamation to take me home, what joy shall fill my heart when he calls me, I will answer 
and I will bow in humble adoration and my soul will say, how great, how great thou art. For I know I have a house of many mansions, eternal in the heavens, up where Jesus lives, up beyond the atmosphere, the stratosphere, the exosphere, the troposphere, up where I'll never grow old, up to the streaks of gold, up beyond the vicissitudes of life. And I will honor him as King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and simply say to him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever and forever and forever. My God, how great thou art. Let us pray. I feel to pray at this time. I believe God. And I don't know. You may be on the verge. You know there's suicide spirits that's following folks. You may be on the verge of suicide. Someone may be on the verge of swapping time for eternity. Someone, his body is racking with pain. Well, one may feel, well, Ellen Hinton, that's going to always be. But it still don't stop us from praying. Father in heaven, as we pray and as we bombard heaven, as we grip the bell cord in Zion, the need is so great. But kind Savior, you're greater than the need. The sick, the suffering, the dying, the afflicted, the downhearted, the troubled mother, the troubled father, disturbed about their children. Oh God, marriage that's heading for the rocks and everything they're doing within their power to steer it and turn it, but it's moving in that direction. Oh God, you said to call on you in the day of trouble and you would deliver and we would glorify you. Jesus, we need your help. Send thou help from the sanctuary and strengthen us out of Zion. You know our hearts, you know our needs, you know every heart, the churches that's in desperation, that's in destitute, and the church is some of them that the enemy is trying to fold up and close down discourage leaders and pastors and oh God and stare them and give them a new inspiration give them new fortitude in times like these for we know the enemy is fighting the faith of those that's endeavoring to do your will be unto us wisdom and we'll thank you for it amen and amen thank you so much for coming and I want to tell you something, work on, pray on, and don't get weary. All right? Because one of these days, we're all going where? Let's all stand. to acknowledge the presence of the Reverend Kenneth Ulmer. Amen. My good friend, the Reverend Ron McGrew. Say amen for him. If there are any other preachers I don't know, the Reverend Bernard Rome. Come on up, Reverend. And we don't ever do anything without recognizing our business manager, our friend, our mother. We love her. Natalie Harris. I'd like to recognize Barbara Murphy's mother from Chicago, Illinois, Geneva Murphy. Half a second. Yeah. All right. 
John said, I saw a city. It was a city for a square. And in this city, love, only the righteous will be there. He said, In this holy city, you know the streets. The streets, they are paved with gold. Yes, they are. He said, in the city, we will never, we will never, we will never, never grow. Everybody. We're gonna get there when it's over. I'm trying to start my watch party. I don't, it, well, it's not cooperating. I was trying to, not to sing, not to sing. <laughs> I, you know, that song is just, you know, you just get in there, you want to sing, you want to sing. So I, guess, um, we're gonna I had start to have myself church. on mute. <laughs> Yeah. We're gonna start having I church. I did sing. Now. I was just <laughs> right, mute. right, right, right. So I, I put it on mute and, and I'm like, okay, let me just go ahead and sing. So yeah. that is the choir song of the decade of, of the last hundred years. I mean, that's in the definite top 50 right. choir song, top top 25, top 10. You know, today is appropriate that we are celebrating, I guess we're still celebrating James yeah. Cleveland. Yeah. We have Pastor Bernard Rome coming yeah. here. Uh, 40 years ago, I was at Operation Push, and okay. they were celebrating the start of, what, 50 years of gospel music, and Tommy Dorsey was there as the father of gospel music. And so <laughs> if that was 40, 50 years, now I'm 40 years later. So it's 90 years that gospel music has been with us here on earth, what we know as gospel music. Yeah, and, and, yeah, and, and again, you know, like you said, um, people don't realize that um, gospel music is an original American art form. It's not right. from Europe, it's not from over here, it's not from over there. Gospel music is right here and it's fairly new. Right, right, yeah. it is. Right. So look, hey, I, I had the opportunity to meet some of the greats, That's you know, right. Albertina Walker was there with the caravans, uh, right. Dolores Washington. I saw Inez Andrew Gibbs, 
uh, Reverend Clay Evans, uh, Lou Dell of First Church of Deliverance Choir was there with Ralph Goodpasture. And mm. just some of the old people, and you, you look back. Oh, you call and roll was, now. You call and <laughs> <laughs> roll. roll. You call and yeah. roll. Like, and wow. it's, it's a great opportunity just what? to see how far gospel music has come and what we're doing with it now. Yes, we have these awards show, the Stella Awards. That's the great And that's before great the Stellar Awards, you had the Gospel Music Excellence Award yeah. from the Gospel Music Workshop of America. They started, you know, giving out Gospel Music Awards. So right. you, you just have so much and we have a rich history that we are built on. And it's, it's just amazing. Like I said, you know, you were talking. We know the people who started this. Exactly. <laughs> and some of the people, people that, are still with us. They're still with us. And our well, guest a few. today, a few. Yeah, yeah, it's a few, but they're still here. Um, and today we're looking at um, uh, Calvin Bernard Roan, who, I mean, was walked right along with the founder, as you saw him on the clip when we first mm -hmm. got started. That was his song. He wrote that song. And I mean, it's been recorded like, 6,000 times because we got <laughs> one recording was done right here in Detroit and um, I can remember um, Reverend Cleveland said oh y'all don't believe me let me have <laughs> Reverend Charles Craig come up here and read this scripture and so while it was doing in the background it I John I John so I did you know it it, it was right it, right so it's, it's been recorded many many times um, this song is one of the the most well-loved songs in gospel music and we're so happy to have the writer here um, with us today. And he's written so many other songs that we know for Tremaine Hawkins and a lot of other people. And he'll Darryl tell us Coley. about it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He'll tell us. He'll tell us. He'll tell us all about it when it comes on. But how are you guys doing? And, and we want to welcome everybody to today's installment of the Sandy Rose Show. And just in case you don't know, and maybe you can't read the bottom of the screen, I am Sandy Rose. Who are you? I'm Richard Daryl Nichols. All right, he has three name status. <laughs> okay, well, I'm Jacqueline Maria Williams. <laughs> if you add and Vickers, you'll be half four name status. I know, that's right, Jacqueline Maria well, Vickers Williams, yes. Well, if you want to put respect on it, she would be pastor. Okay, that's, that's <laughs> what you say, put some speck on that. Put some, <laughs> yeah. put some speck on that, so. Yeah, we are glad <laughs> Now, to... Mr. would prefer me to say, I'm Mrs. Jerome. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right, 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 right. So, um, and put some speck on put that. Put some speck on that. <laughs> what do you say? Because I pay these bills up in here. He so. paid her all $20. <laughs> that he found. Wait a minute. Okay. That we found in the parking lot when we was going to get our license. <laughs> oh, oh, Lord. But I it's, kid it's, you it's not. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just good to be here today. Um, again, I, as I told you guys earlier, I'm just waiting on um, December the 21st um, so that the days will start getting longer. Because right yes. now, every day is shorter. Daylight shorter. is getting shorter and shorter. And the 21st is the breaking point where the days start adding on minutes. And I'm like, yes. I like it. My days don't really? get long. It seems like until January. Yeah. No, it's yeah, December twenty first. December winter solstice. December twenty okay. first. It starts. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I wait uh, for it. The sun is year. out. Hey, the sun is out just a little Ain't bit. No better. sun. <laughs> <laughs> it's dark, and by the time this show ends, it will be dark as ten thousand midnight. By the time okay. the show is over, it will be black dark. Yeah, it'll be dark as ten thousand midnight. So well, I'm gonna yeah. go outside and get me some vitamin D. <laughs> I was out earlier. I was out earlier, so I got what I could while I could. Me too. And um, the spirits say, "Bring it on back in, reel it on back in." Yeah, Rain and, and I, I, we were rushing. I said, "Rain, we have to hurry up and get dark quick. It get dark yeah, quick. We have yeah, to hurry up. Get, okay, yep. now." <laughs> mm -hmm. It's like, uh, come on, reel it back in, reel it back in. So I'm just um, happy about the whole thing. Happy about the whole. Yeah. Um, it, Charles said, ain't no sun in these parts. We see the moon. Uh, <laughs> <right>. <laughs> so, 
And it's amazing how we can all be on this broadcast. You know, I thank God for technology. We can all be on this broadcast in this sunshine where Richard is, and it's it's dark where we are. Right. Okay. right. But then he also has he has he also has three hours on us too. See, so yes. he mm -hmm. he would be he would be in darkness. <laughs> but, but he's in that marvelous early. that marvelous light three more hours <laughs> give me three more hours i'll i'll see darkness see, yeah because it still gets it. dark what about five o'clock there five about four thirty five mm -hmm. see yeah. same, well, see, same it's early it's still yeah. early it depends on how cl cloudy or how sunny it is like yesterday was kind of gloomy so it got dark earlier like really? around 4 15 mm -hmm. 4 30. I'm Today okay. the sun is out just a tank bit brighter, so oh, we might you. see four thirty-five o'clock. Yes, I'm darker. telling you, it's dark, dark. Okay, it's flashing. <laughs> mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> it's staying your house dark. <laughs> I know that's right. It's called senior citizens. We're officially in. <laughs> okay, we're in. Take it in. Take it in. Take it. In, we're not going anywhere else. Uh 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 uh. Well, we're on lockdown, so. Oh yeah, yeah, and you know, um, the hotels. I found that amazing that the hotels will only make reservations if you're staying 14 days, um, unless yeah, unless you can prove that you are an essential worker. But, what? But yeah, you're not coming there. Um, mm -mm, no, they say 14 no, you're not, days. You're not bringing Rona to California. They say. <laughs> okay. So keep Rona at your house. Mm -hmm. 14 days. Yeah. And do you have a better feeling about the environment now that we have uh, a new person that might be going, okay, that is going to the White House? Mm -hmm. I feel I was not safer, but more comfortable. About yeah, what, you can kind of say that because yeah. it's responsible people in the room. Before exactly. we had a room full of kids, <laughs> yeah. you know, <laughs> and know. the kids was run. It's like <laughs> letting the kindergartners and say, "Y'all uh, run the country." Uh, Sandy, let me correct you. We were in a room full of special needs children. <laughs> don't well, uh, Miss 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 Jackie Pastor, don't do that, please. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they were I, had, I, I taught special ed for 30 years. I'm years. sorry, some of them rode the short yellow bus. And they were great people too, better than some of the people in the White House now. Okay, you you you're right. I'm educated, <laughs> yeah. but you 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 know what I mean when I say that. I don't. I, 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 I know I, what I, you orally. Hey, yeah. I know where you are, but I'm I'm just giving you a hard time, my sister. You can't talk about <laughs> my kids. <laughs> you know. You yeah, know, we, but we, now now you kind of feel like the adults are in the room. Um, I was a little disturbed because they had a meeting today about the distribution because, you know, they've already said, well, we didn't buy enough uh, vaccines. They had the opportunity to buy enough vaccines back in June, July, and right. they only brought bought X amount and said, we good. And it was like, really? And they said, <laughs> yeah, we good. So you know what it was? That. Trump was, he was still president and he thought he was going to win. Yeah, so it's care. all about money. I believe he had another company in mind that he wanted yes, to yes, yes. patronize. So, exactly, exactly. So there will be several, um, several different um, manufacturers here in the United States that have. And I was a little, mm, but I wasn't surprised that they did not invite um, President-elect Biden to the meeting today that they had about the distribution of the, uh, so now oh, we're going to kind of start a little back. Yeah. You know, yeah. uh, let, let me say this, the church needs to pray now, Jackie, more than ever. Jackie, you on. And before we go to break, um, what I want you to do, because this vaccine is, is here and we want to thank God for the vaccine. But mm -hmm. we don't want no shenanigans, all right? right no right. shenanigans. And I want you, Jackie, before we, you know, I'll let you know when we get ready to go on break, um, to pray for the vaccine, you know, and the people that administer it um, so that 
we don't have any any shenanigans, no foolery, um, no you get this and you might not get this and right. all of this. I want you to also pray for people that they will have the grace to stay in the house for Christmas. <clears throat> You know, because a lot of people are not, they can't do it. You know, <laughs> mentally, you know, it's like, I got to be outside. I got to be outside, you know, so. We're gonna and you know what, I, this year, this year, I've, because uh, I'm a Christmas girl. I love Christmas. But the last few years, because Mr. is not, he could care less. Uh, and so I stopped. I really stopped doing Christmas like I I used to have a put a tree in every room, honey. <laughs> you know, yeah, I should think in my was, public yeah. spaces I had trees in all of my public spaces, yep. and fully decorate outside, inside, and so uh, th because we are in, and I know we're not going anywhere because sometimes we we would travel in, in December too. Uh, so since we we're at home, I bought new games and. And I'm bringing out my decorations. My babies put my tree together. I have, you have, I have to put it on Facebook so you all can see how Rain and Ryan decorated Nana's uh, main right. tree. And, and we, I'm we also want to pray for people that they don't feel lonely during this season, right? Because they can't have the company that they're used to having. Um, some people, your grandchildren, probably don't need to come to your house if you don't know where they've been. Because it, you know, it would just be tragic if they brought something to you and right, now right. grandma is sick. Yeah, mine has been with me, um, you know, most in, of the time. Season. We also want to um, pray that the Lord will bind people closer during this season mm -hmm. um, because we are in the house. Now we have an opportunity to miss people. You know, right. <laughs> a lot of times we were seeing each other so much, we didn't miss each other, yes. you know, <laughs> and now we have an opportunity to miss each other and perhaps we'll start appreciating one another a little bit more, mm -hmm. yes. you know, instead mm -hmm. of just seeing people like ships in the night and, oh girl, I saw you last week, you know, ain't no thing, but no, we, we need to learn to appreciate one another. So it's, it's, it's a different time. Um, we pray for the Lord to give us ideas. I thought about that girl and that vending machine yesterday with, the, with that weed. And I said, <laughs> she's sitting at home making money. Yes. And she didn't do nothing. She's sitting at home making money because she came up, you know, with let's put some weed in a vending machine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what can we say? What I, nothing, we... but if you get somewhere and get still, maybe the Lord might give you a, a multi million dollar, you know, idea because that's right. what the scripture says He will give us inventions and witty ideas. So it's, you know, it's, it's the perfect time. I don't, you know, we said back early on that we believe that God put the whole world on hold. So everybody will go home, sit down, and and have an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. That's right. What the Spirit is saying to you as an individual. That's why I believe this whole thing has been going on. And, and if we have been taking advantage, like girl thought of that idea, you know, yeah. and I've been writing, you know, I've been taking notes all year of things the Lord been planting in my heart and in, in my mind. And I'm like, uh, when you say go, God, I'll be ready. Cause right. you know, I'm right. Cause you teeth. need to stay ready. So you don't have to get ready. And it's a lot of things over here. And I thank God that I'm mm -hmm. working on and I thank God for giving me the idea. See? So Jackie, <laughs> let's bring our guest on. So before we do, um, why don't you say a prayer? I want you to say a prayer for the vaccines and the vac uh, uh, that. Lord, this evening, we come to you specifically concerning the vaccine. God, we recognize that it is your wisdom that all gifts, good gifts come from you. So the men and women who have done this study, we pray an anointing on what they have yes, done. Lord. Yes, Lord. We pray, Lord God, that it will be effective, oh God. Yes, we pray, Lord God, that you will give wisdom 
to those who have to administer it, to those who have to make the decisions on who gets what when. We pray, oh God, a spirit of unity. Yes, Lord. We bind the spirit of discord and confusion regarding yes, it, oh God. We pray, Holy Spirit, that your love and your peace at this time and this season, when we think about when you were born, hallelujah, and why? that the spirit of peace will be in the midst of this entire situation. Yes. We bind confusion in the name of Jesus. Yes. Everything that's not like you, God, we bind it in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Now, God, all is well because of you. Yeah, it is. It really isn't the vaccine, God, it's you. All is well because of you. All will be well. All will be in order because you are God of order. And we thank you and we claim it in Jesus' name. It is so. It is Amen. So. Amen. And Amen. Thank God. Amen. Amen. Hey, Sandy, before we go to break, mm -hmm. can I just uh, ask the audience one request? Yeah. Could you, could you, everyone that's listening to us right now, could you go press that button that says share? and share Amen. it to your Facebook page right now. Do that Please. on purpose. Please share this purpose. to your, right? Share to your Facebook page and other pages right now. Thank you, do that for us. Amen, right, and thanks. then when we come back, we'll give you some shout outs. So all of your friends will hear the shout outs. Amen. Uh, <laughs> all right, well, we have our special guest uh, uh, is with us, uh, Reverend Calvin Bernard Rohn. He'll be on right after this song. Enjoy this song. This is the medley from, um, from our guest today. So if you enjoy all these songs, there he is. All right. Thanks for listening. This is WBTC, the gospel radio station, right here in Detroit. The joy that you see and the victory you need I said the joy that you seek and the victory you need. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, my, my. How many of you might remember this one? The Lord our God is a mighty God. The Lord our God is a mighty God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The Lord our God is a mighty refuge. The Lord our God is a refuge. If we don't praise him, the rocks will cry out. But I don't want no rocks crying out for me.
more you think about it. I love you. My heart sings. I praise you, Lord. Holy, holy. I adore you. You are everything I need you to be. You are. You are Now you should have felt something there. You <laughs> yeah, should have yeah, yeah. felt something. You should have felt something. 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 You should have felt it. Amen. Amen. And I'm sure that you recognize um, some of the songs uh, from Daryl Coley. You recognize a song from Tremaine, and so many others have recorded um, this uh, gospel legend. Uh, his, <laughs> his music amen and so we want to welcome him right on how are you how are you my friend i am well i am well good to see you good to see each of your faces yeah good to be seen and not viewed absolutely (laughs) absolutely now sandy he has a real three name calvin bernard he he has (laughs) three name status 
Um, you know, so he it, that that's three name status. You have you have gotten to that top pinnacle when people call you by <laughs> all three names. You you you've arrived. You've arrived. Hey, got to put the respect on it now. Put some spec on it. <laughs> Pastor Calvin Bernard. Pastor Rome. Calvin Bernard <laughs> Rome. How are you? A great musician, pastor, musician, artist. Uh, you know, so we just world renowned. Yes. <laughs> uh, world renowned. Because last Amen. well, last year this time, or was it last year, year before, you were all over. We were somewhere. We were watching videos from you all over. 2018, I was in uh, Denmark. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 2017, I was in France. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. And exactly. and he didn't just go. They sent for him. Almost <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Folks, just go. You give and make room for you. You give and make room. That for part. You. That yeah. part. Absolutely. Yes, but we are so glad we were talking earlier about you know pioneers and how relatively new um, gospel music is and you um, have stood right along with with those who began this art form. Right. You, you, know, you know, the amazing thing that I share with people, I started very young. I began in the field of gospel music very young and therefore at an early age, having um, the opportunity to work with Reverend James Cleveland I also, that also afforded me the opportunity to meet Thomas Dorsey before he passed, to meet Sally Martin before she passed, and even to sit with them. And uh, those experiences, uh, those experiences are, right. I mean, I, I treasure. Yes. I treasure. Because yes. everybody didn't get those. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. And hey. um, the things I've, I learned from them, I mean, songwriters like Raymond Raspberry. Hmm. Um, Only what you do. Absolutely, you know. Of course, the late DJ Rogers now. And um, these were people who really poured into my life. They spoke into my life as a young child. And so um, I'm just grateful for the opportunities that I've been afforded to meet so many, uh, not just great people, but people who laid a foundation for what is being done today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the, since you were talking about your beginning, why don't you talk about H, uh, R. H. Harris of the Soulsters? R. You had a beginning. Oh Lord, oh Lord Jesus. You had a beginning with him. <laughs> okay, you've been listening or reading, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> well, you yeah, know, did homework. <laughs> hey, my my wife said I'm a, a groupie. But I'm a professional groupie, so yes, I follow yes. you around. <laughs> As they say, you're you're professional. <laughs> yes. Yeah, uh, <laughs> a lot of, a lot of people today might not know or remember R. H. Harris, but he was the original one of the original lead singers of the Soul Stirrers. Okay. He was the primary lead singer before Sam Cook joined with them. As a matter of fact, it was his departure from the group that allowed Sam Cooke to come in and then become the lead singer. I met him when I was just, uh, I would say I was probably as young as three years old mm -hmm. because my dad was a quartet singer. Okay. And during that time, the 60s, uh, we would travel every other year to the National Convention of Quartets. It was the National Quartet Convention of America. And, uh, and, and it's not the new one but okay. it's the older one. <laughs> mm -hmm. And R.H. Harris was the then national president. I always tell people that he probably bounced me on his knee many, many times. Okay. Uh, and, that, and actually that's where I started. I began singing quartet because of my dad. And uh, if you've ever heard of the Mighty Sons of Glory, which originally began right here in Los Angeles, uh, I was an original, I'm an original member of the Mighty Sons of Glory. Um, they never, you know, reached the status of maybe the mighty clouds or, but we traveled all over the country. And after I left, they did some recordings. So I began with quartet. And so that's how I was able to meet R.H. Harris. And I mean, face to face, meet some of the Dixie Hummingbirds and um, the Jackson Southern Ears, you know, again, groups that were foundational and groups that were popular for the golden age of gospel. Yes. 
which was in the 50s. Yes. You know, I had an opportunity to meet many of them before they died. And, and we were talking earlier, it was brand new. Yeah. <laughs> in the 50s, this is something that was new. And, and, and you know. Um, and it came from us. Yeah. Oh, most definitely. Most, most definitely what, um, and, and I'm not sure, well, you know what, there has been an adequate recording of the history, even beyond way back to the 20s. Um, I always tell people a lot of the music that was being recorded and performed in the 40s and the 50s was actually written in the 20s and the 30s and some even in the 1800s. Um, there has been a wonderful recorded history, but I'm not sure if we have honored it enough, if we right. have we told the story, you know, we just like one of my loves, I like to think about, okay, we call Thomas Dorsey, the father of black gospel music in America, but who was his inspiration? Yes. Right. Yeah. You know, most yes. people don't know about a lot of people. Some people do, but our younger people don't know about persons like Charles Tinley who was, you know, not only a songwriter, but a pastor who mm -hmm. in the 1800s pastored what we call today a mega church. His membership okay. was several thousand and predominantly white congregation. Mm. And he was a self-educated man who had come out of slavery. And I'm like, wow, this history is it awesome. Is. That's and, good. Uh, you know, good. His, music, his music was performed at the Baptist Convention where Thomas Dorsey made or experienced his conversion. Okay. So it's, I love discovering that. I like a little tidbit thing, and I'm going to show you about <laughs> Reverend Cleveland. Uh, Reverend Cleveland had a very unique style of playing the piano and arranging particularly for his group, the Cleveland Singers. And I began to ask the question, where did he get that from? Who was his inspiration? And I believe so strongly that Robert, Roberta Martin was his primary inspiration for his piano styling mm -hmm. and for the way he arranged voices with his group mm -hmm. because they were so, I mean, it was the same formula that she had is the formula that he used. So I love stuff like that, you know, yeah, just the history. Yeah, yeah. Who inspired and, you? Right, right. And we look at people like um, Louise McCord who... Uh, we'll talk about a little later on in the show. Mm -hmm. She'll be um, in Lion and State tomorrow. She was a, a Roberta Martin singer. Wow. And also a, a member of the Voices of Tabernacle. Mm. Who came out of uh, pretty much Lofton's, uh, Reverend James L. Lofton's church, Senior's church, um, who had a 500 voice choir in the 50s. Wow. Mm -hmm. And it was led by Reverend Charles Ashley Craig II. Wow. Um, and then when mm -hmm. he got a hold to Reverend Cleveland, they got together and here's Prayer Tabernacle, the voice of the tabernacle. And now you're getting all this illustrious choir music. Um, so, you know, it's a, it's a rich history and it's not just at one place. It's right. from here, here, right. here, here, and it all blends together. You know, it just blends. Somebody needs to take the time to, to write it up, though. Because, Once it, yes. Go ahead, Pastor. No, I was going to say, I've already expressed to a few people around the country that one of the greatest desires I have is to create a Facebook page uh, called The Unsung Heroes of Gospel Music. Okay. And what I'd like for this page to do is, is explore from the different regions of the country the gospel yes. musicians, yes. songwriters, and singers, and ministers yes. of music who maybe never recorded, yes. but they influenced those who did, mm -hmm. you know, because we, we follow the hype, but the real substance of what we do is in that congregation on a Sunday morning, sometimes on a Wednesday afternoon, songs with birds doing Bible study, doing prayer meetings, and those persons poured into your James Cleveland's, your, even your Aretha Franklin's. There, there was yes. a musician that she listened to, you know. Yes. And yes. I would love for, for that story to be told so that hopefully the church will take its eyes off of the celebrityism Come of on now. gospel music and really focus on the substance and servants of gospel music who provide this music to the masses on a regular basis, but their names are never called. 
never, never call. call. Right. Never on the radio, never on a recording. But if it were not for them, we wouldn't have some of the recordings that we have. Wouldn't have yeah. the artists that we have. You yeah. know, somebody poured into Yolanda Adams. Somebody mm-hmm. poured into Kirk Franklin. Somebody right. poured into John P. Key. There was somebody who influenced these people, mm-hmm. and we don't know their names. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Mm-hmm. We do not know their names. I was yeah. talking to um, Jeffrey Lavalley. And he was saying how there was um, a, a lady that was in his church and she came up with several songs and people kind of attribute them to him. And he said, no, that's mother, <laughs> you know. Um, and, and it's amazing, but you're sitting in church, you're hearing this stuff. Um, even just, even some of the congregation of devotional songs, we don't mm. sing them anymore, but those have led to other songs. You know, mm-hmm. but we heard them as children, and then you, you, you just. Uh, and some of them have just been reinvented. Yeah, the Absolutely. words were dust taken, it. just and dust it, did a, dust a, it off. a new twist with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know that there's a new, a modern argument <laughs> that on, says Pastor. there's no choir music nowadays. People aren't writing choir music, but I would say to those people, when you learn history when the choir was birthed in the 30s, as we know it today in the black church, through okay. Sally Martin traveling around the country and de- organizing and developing yeah. singers. So uh, when they organized in 1933, the National Convention of Choirs and Courses, uh, Gospel Choirs and Courses, she went around developing choirs for the congregations. And the songs that they sang were not necessarily written for choir, but the, the, the genius of the musicians and the ministers of music mm-hmm. is they arranged songs that were recorded by soloists. They arranged mm-hmm. songs that were recorded by quartets and groups. Um, they arranged it for the choir. And next thing you know, the choir was singing these songs. And then later on, people start writing specifically for choir. choirs or writing choral right. music. But uh, there will never be a lack of choral music, as long as there's music, (laughs) it can be arranged for anybody to sing. A solo, duet, trio, quintet, quartet, sextet, whatever. And and we look at how (laughs) we do it. Yeah, we look at how we do it because even looking at um, Reverend Charles Craig II, um, he had seven, eight part harmony. If you listen to those records, you know, so, he he de- developed the songs for choirs, and then we we can put them down to all the way to three parts, four parts, six parts. You know, you make them as, as what you want because it's it's uh, this this music is free. Absolutely, <laughs> you know, um, we don't have to do like the masters over in in Europe and say you play this just like this, you know, every single time we can be creative. When I, when I went over to France the first time in the Gap, France, in the uh, Hoot Alps, there, they brought me over there and their major cry was, we want to sing black gospel music the way you guys <laughs> sing it. I went over there and I was just really blown away because we're talking about quality voices, quality trained musicians, but they weren't satisfied just playing by the music. They wanted that feeling. They wanted that soulfulness. And it blew me away. But it also said to me, we need to respect and honor what God has given us and uniquely us and be proud of that and never let it die. That's Never right. let it die. Never let it die. That's right. And you've seen them come into the workshop um, from Japan, from from everywhere. And right. and it's like if you closed your eyes, yeah. <laughs> right, right, you, you would said. not know <laughs> right. that that was not my cousin. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. Listen, when I, it was so amazing. When I did, when I went to France, when I went to Gap, France, um, one of their directors, they did, the choir did Jesus Drop the Charges. Wow. By the Oatmeal Twins. Yes. yes. They did. The funny part to me was the guy who was leading the song, 
he did the narration that they did on the recording. <laughs> they tried to do the narration. Oh, so they did the whole song. They did the whole song. I'm like, wow. Uh huh. And so, they study this. I talked to yes. a couple people that um, come every year, you know, when we go to the convention, they come into the classes and I try to talk to them. Some of them don't even speak English. English. You know, which is amazing to me, but they sing perfect English. Yes, you know? yes. Um, I had that and, experience in Japan. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, just, you know, just that, and they, they want to soak up everything. Just soak up everything. And we walk past it, but they're like, you know, we, because we, because we, because we just do it. And, yeah. And Pastor, yeah. you're absolutely, absolutely correct in that it's something that we have to understand. It is uniquely us, and and value it. Yeah. Because everybody, everybody is asking for it. Yeah. And you're abs I remember when the Whitfield Company when we went to Spain. It was phenomenal. It was phenomenal. They were soaking it up like you thought it was 14 karat gold. And they just soaked it up and they were so inspired and, and, and full of questions. They couldn't speak English hardly and them that could, they were like, how do you do that? How, how do you do that? How do you do that? Yeah. The and we, we've got, as, as they say, Jesus in the jug and a stopper <laughs> in our hand. And <laughs> And we still can't figure it out. We cannot <laughs> figure it out. You have everything you need. And yeah, it's, 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 you know, it's, it's that statement. What is it? Uh, familiarity breeds. Yes. Mm -hmm. What's mm -hmm. the following after that? There's a kind of, I, I won't say that our people disrespect what we do. It's Take just that when it's all you've known and all you have, it becomes it so familiar and so common. common. It's common. Um, yep, it's common. You like to, what? Yeah, to the degree that it's rare over there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so they treasure it. You know, they treasure mm -hmm. it. And I am grateful for this because I'm always very positive about it. I am very grateful that for a long time now, there have been black educators, excuse me if that word offends anybody, I like being black, but African-Americans, you know, Negro, <laughs> they are African-American scholars who for years have been writing this history and some of it has been published, some of it is known, but a lot of it is not known. A lot of it is in the archives of academic universities and I, I would just say it's time for it to come out. Yes. It's time for it to come hey, out. Hey, Pastor, yes. I remember, uh, what, two years ago, uh, Dr. Margaret Pleasant DeVoe presented this program at uh, California African American Museum, yes. and you were in charge of that, and you were going through the history of uh, the gospel music. You did an excellent, fantastic job. We love that. You know, I, what, I, I sometimes I feel like, what is it? Like Paul said, I was born out of time or out of season. Okay. But I so celebrate the time in which I was born mm -hmm. because I was born at a time where it enabled me to reach back and touch some of the founders, if you will. Yes. And then mm -hmm. to reach forward and know some of these young artists today. Mm -hmm. And I intentionally stay involved with new young artists because say it's that. so important that that as Dr. Margaret Pleasant de Roe recently said, that there be a link yes. that yes. hooks it all up. Yes. Uh, right. When I went over to France, and I'm I'm trying not to talk about so much of my France experience. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. But it's when good. I went over to France, the first assignment they gave me was to work with their leaders, their soloists in their choir, because they wanted to learn how to lead like us. You know, they they'll tell you, we want to know how to run. We <laughs> <laughs> and we trying to, we trying to get them not to run so much. So much. <laughs> right. And I and and many times I talk to young people here and I tell them I want to tell you where the run comes from. The run comes and this is my perspective. Okay. The modern day run is the tale of Mahalia Jackson's falling off a note. Oh, <laughs> okay. 
back okay. in the day, if you listen okay. to Mahel, if you listen to the, the artists who sang then, they sang notes and they fell off them. They bent the notes and they fell off of them. Hmm. Yeah. In the upper room Ma. with Jesus. You know, it's just... Yeah. <laughs> but now what the young people do is in the upper room with Jesus. They add a tail to it. Mm -hmm. But what's more important than that, it's an expression of your experience. Mm -hmm. We fell off a of notes in the, in, in the past because that was musically indicative of our experience. We were cut off from our name, from our identity everything about it. It was stolen from us. So mm -hmm. we put that in our song. We mm -hmm. sang the pain. We, we, we expressed the pain. Now the young people have a different experience. Mm -hmm. And you know, one, one thing that, that I, I, I thought Good. of when you said Good. that is that um, this is not like the history of the United States where one thing happened in one place and you can just write about that one thing that happened in that one particular place. Yeah. This, this was happening all over. Yeah. You had that, you know, some California folks, they were doing some stuff and in Chicago, they were doing some stuff and in yes. Alabama and in Detroit. Yes. And so all of these make up the whole gospel you know Absolutely. you just can't oh, write about one one thing it's yeah. it's all this was going on simultaneously the, the east holy coast ghost. has a sound the holy ghost mm -hmm. yes the east coast has a sound detroit has a sound chicago has a sound the midwest the south has a sound the west coast has a sound as a matter of fact there is um, a friend of mine in Japan. We call him Mr. H because his name is so difficult to pronounce. We can just say Mr. H. He came to me and said he would like to write a history of gospel music for the Japanese. And he wants to write See? it in Japanese. And I told him, and because he knew me personally, that he knew uh, Donnie McClurkin, excuse me, he wanted to speak to us to get some information. And I said, let me tell you something. If you want to write an adequate history of gospel music of America for Japan, I said, what you probably need to do is broaden your resource, broaden those you talk to, because each region in the United States has a different sound right. and contribute right. Right. to what you all are hearing over, you know, overseas and in other, right. other countries. So the gospel music in America is so multifaceted. That's right. You know, is right. that, so I said to do it justice, you would need to talk to some of the key people on the East Coast, New York and, and Detroit, and then go to the Midwest, Chicago, even, um, uh, uh, um, what's that, uh, Mill, not, is it, yeah, Milwaukee. There's some things that came St. out of Louis. Milwaukee. People St. don't Louis. realize St. Louis, you know, Philadelphia, you yes. know, people yes. forget Philadelphia, you know, that's where Claire Ward originated from. That's uh, where the uh, 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 came Rosie from. Wallace. Yeah. So, you know, these sounds were formed in these areas. Now watch this. Now, some people may not like this. I had <laughs> some people approach me to talk about the history of gospel music in the, in the, on the West Coast. And they started with, you know, Reverend James Cleveland. I said, no, I don't include Reverend Cleveland in the West Coast sound of gospel music because he brought from yeah. Chicago and Detroit yeah. what yeah. he gave to Southern California Community Choir. If you're going to talk about authentic sounds of the West Coast, then you have to go to those who were born here. People like the Hawkins, people like yes. Andre Yes, Krupp. yes. That's okay. a whole nother yes. a sound. A whole nother sound. sound. Yeah. Yeah, you That's know, right. even when you think about the Los Angeles Community Choir, which was organized before the Southern California Community Choir, mm -hmm. um, you know, that's a whole different sound. The choir that gave us, uh, I decided to make Jesus my choice, you know, yeah. Bubba yeah. Harrison, Bubba Johnson. Those are original West Coast sounds mm -hmm. that are so different from other areas. And so I just believe that it's important to get, uh, Jeff Thir LaValle is on here. Yeah, Jeff Thurston. Valley said he came from Milwaukee. Yeah, he's from Milwaukee. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so. But, the, all, you know, you got Thurston Frazier and, yes. and you know, all, all of that. So, yeah. It, 
all and and the whole oh my god you can write a bunch of books and they all be correct trust (laughs) trust (laughs) Trust. absolutely particularly if we focus on the regions and the different areas and you know like i'm saying there's there's a rich there's a rich heritage in detroit that's Uh you know that's still unknown in other places same thing for Chicago, you know, same thing for Milwaukee, same thing for Philadelphia, New York, all over here in Los Angeles. And it's, uh, I'm, I'm praying, you know, if I don't, I don't know if I'm going to be the one who will <laughs> cause it to be, or however God does it, I really, right. really pray that we as a people would Come on now. I want to help. Celebrate. I want to help. Okay. okay, okay. <laughs> I want to help. Because I'll, mm-hmm. I'll push to make it happen. I'll push. Yeah. To make she's it quite a historian. Oh, yeah. listen, we, I know. Got, listen, she's I quite a historian. She and has, you know, it's just she fascinating has because that has nobody else seen. <laughs> I've, um, you know, uh, just like I sat down and interviewed you. You know, it's and the Lord just put it on my heart. Just talk to these people. Put them on film and let them tell their own story. Yeah. You know, instead of someone else saying, oh, well, they came from here, here. No, you tell me where you came from. <laughs> you tell me who inspired you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was born right here in Los Angeles, California. Glad to be a West Coast baby. <laughs> All yeah, right. Yeah. West, My, Corp, West Coast purebred. <laughs> purebred. Pure you graduated breed. from Los Angeles High School. Los Angeles High School. That's right. All right. <laughs> yeah. That's, um, and my music mentor was a person by the name of Professor Marvin Jenkins. Okay. He had uh, at one time the oldest trio in gospel music here in the city. Wow. And he was my minister of music. And he's the one who birthed in me a love for choir music, <laughs> for gospel choir music. And the way that I direct, the way that I develop voices basically comes from him. Okay. And uh, he was well known here. Uh, all of the greats would come to LA and they all fellowship. He fellowship with all of the, with the ward singers and the uh, caravans. And, you know, whenever they came to LA, he was a part of that group where the musicians would come together and fellowship. And then um, a young man by the name of John Terry back in the day of the Terry Lynn Community Choir who were a part of, of the Gospel Music Workshop of America when I was coming up, he gave me my start. He, okay. began, he began my professional gospel music career okay. at the age of eight, 1969, at the Embassy mm. Auditorium, downtown Los Angeles. And I always tell people I like that, that the reason why it was professional because that was the first time I got paid. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, well, I'm going to tell you, I went across the land, the length and breadth of this country before I knew anybody was getting any money. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I said, John, we getting paid for this? And, and my testimony is I did not ask for pay. Okay, okay. I experienced what the word says, and I don't say that to be braggadocious. I say it to be pra- giving praise to God, that my gift made room for me. Right. And nah. it took me before great, great men, men, and those great now. men paid me. You know, Come on now. They yes. gave to me. My father, my earthly dad, was my first manager. And when I tell you he took care of me, my dad took so, so good care of me. He would not let preachers talk to me. He would not, not let other musicians. You didn't talk business to his son. Mm. <laughs> okay, said, you, and, you and talk and to me. We have a comment here from um, Jeffrey. He said, "Bless you. Your dad gave me the opportunity to play for him on my secret closet at GMWA in Cleveland." Okay, isn't that something? Wow. Isn't that something? What we're going to do, um, we've got so many comments in here. Um, let's go to a song. Um, you, you've gotten so many, um, it's a lot of songs. Um, I think I'm going to do a Christmas song. And this is one of my favorites um, from you. This is Wrapped in Flesh. Uh, oh, wow. This is uh, uh, Calvin Bernard Rome 
wrapped in flesh is the Christmas time in the city. And we'll be right back after this song. This is WBTC, Gospel Radio Station, right here in Detroit. Tell your friends we're on. Go get them. Tag them. Yeah, the reason, the reason for the season, for the season is, to is to celebrate the birth of Jesus. Great song. What year was that? Oh, my. All right. 
The song was written in the late 80s, but we recorded that. This particular recording was my first recording with CGI Records in 92. Okay. 1992 and those singers lord have mercy yeah <laughs> they were from chicago okay <laughs> because cgi records was located in chicago chicago gospel international that's what cgi stood for and it was produced by gloucester williams okay, okay. another another great um yeah. Yeah. songwriter musician producer with i mean historical yeah yeah uh, a, a legend yeah. I rem because I remember him, he had a group called uh, King James Version. And I mean, that was back in the 70s. And um, when I first heard him, he was so ahead of his time. And um, I didn't know that he heard some material that I had recorded independently. And he made a vow that he would produce me. And that's what he did with CGI Records. So, um, that was an awesome experience, 1992. And that, so that song is almost, it's almost 20 years old and it but sounds it's good. fresh. Yeah. And how old is Oh Holy <laughs> Night? Oh Holy Night. You're still Night. playing that, you know. Yeah. Fresh. My, uh, right. <laughs> I mean, just the, just the version of it. So, you know, I don't know yeah. why we get with gospel music and say once a song, we put a date on it and say, ah, oh, we don't need to play that anymore. But they don't do that with the classics. Uh-uh. <clears throat> well, you know, you say they don't do that with the classics. Which no, class? they still play the classics over and over and over and over a hundred years. We're still you talking about another genres? Yeah, other genres. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Now, you know, I really believe that good music lasts forever. Nah. And, ap and after so many years, there's an interesting research I've done after so many years, certain songs always come back. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. always come back. So I often tell people, rest assured that every 20 to 30 years, a good song is reborn. Mm -hmm. And at some point they will still play it. So um, I agree that a lot of times we don't hear gospel classics. No, we don't. Particularly in the what mainstream market of commercial radio mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um and then you know some 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 may disagree with, with me and say rightly so until the church do what it probably should do and can't nobody else do it mm -hmm. and that is until the kingdom of god owns its own come on it now never have its right place in the earth come on come so on. there has to there has to come I don't know if this ever will happen, but there has to come a, a liberation of the kingdom from the world. Yes, yes. I said something right there. Yes, that <laughs> preach. The area in That'll the preach. area of gospel music, mm -hmm. in order for gospel music to have the place that it should have, mm -hmm. particularly in the kingdom, but even in the world. I often, I often tell Would people. Would you agree that a lot of a lot of the sorry for interrupting you no, that a lot of the pastors still don't understand the real significance of the music ministry for their churches? Yes, plain and simple. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that was <Yeah>. easy. <laughs> very, very easy. A lot of them watch this. Watch this now. I'm a pastor. I'm a preacher. I can say it. A lot of, a lot of, not just pastors, but a lot of people in the body of Christ think that music is a preliminary. Uh-huh, uh-huh. We keep thinking that it prepares the heart to receive the word. Uh-huh. I've uh -huh. never embraced that. Uh-huh. Granted, uh -huh. music has a way of opening us up, but watch this. Music opens us up to receive its message. Come on now. Yeah. I always tell gospel singers this. You sing the right song, you don't have to talk a lot in your concert. Okay. No. <laughs> because the song is your message. That's right. And, yeah. and a lot of it is you, biblically, biblically based. So yes. Some of it is scripture. Absolutely. It should be. <laughs> Listen, it should I, all I, be biblically related. None of none, none, nothing that you're singing that's got the music should ever be irrelevant to the word. It should be oh. relevant to something about the word. 
Okay, somebody Period. need to tweet that, text that, post that right now. Come on, come on. It needs to be right. relevant to the word. That's it can't be a go it can't be gospel gospel music, a gospel Absolutely. song. We don't have a gospel. Absolutely. No. Absolutely. Duh. Really? <laughs> yeah. 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 It, it's so, vitally important. And we have yeah. so many um, comments, and I'm gonna clear something up. Um, after you, you said that um, you came out of Milwaukee, I said that um, I read a comment from Jeffrey that said that your father, but it, he was talking to Bethany. Right, so, I saw and that. And you one. had that, yeah, you had that look like, really? <laughs> <laughs> I think, oh. her, but her father's name is, is it something? It's Joe Harris. Harris. Joe, Joe Harris. Harris. Yeah, yeah Joe Reverend Harris. Joe Harris. He recorded um, in the very early days of of GMWA, um, he's on a couple of the records uh, mm -hmm. songs that he wrote. Yeah. Great man of God, great man Amen. of God. Um, but yeah, Pastor Joe Harris. But we got so many people out here, and um, Bishop Andre Woods oh, is wow. is out here with us today, and, and he said, <laughs> yeah, he he's trying to get on us. He full. Um, <laughs> yeah, full. yeah, he he he's like. <laughs> Put it on. You know, have you ever seen to see somebody at the football game and they're like, please put me in, coach. Put me in. Coach. <laughs> I agree with here him. and he's talking about he said that we keep talking about this stuff and, and it's like we, we need, need to, to just go ahead and make it happen. So yeah. I'm gonna do what I need to do because I know that is a gift that God has given me to pull people together. So yeah. let's let's all get together and then y'all can do whatever you're gonna do once you get together. So, you, know, <laughs> you know, we'll we'll all get together. Angie, I told you I wanted to read your book. I told you I want to read your book next year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That is so, what he said. Yeah, that is yeah, what he yeah, said. Yeah, yeah. And that so, may be a part of it. Right. Yeah. Right. I want you to um, to tell me about this picture, okay? Um, give me some some history on that picture. Ah, <laughs> you found that. Give me give me some history on <laughs> that picture. Listen, um, Thomas Whitfield. That wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. This is a different one. We were somewhere. Uh, <laughs> okay. We were somewhere <laughs> ministering at, the same, I love at you. the same time. And he and I had met and we talked. I know I reposted this picture recently with the caption that Thomas Whitfield was to be. It, we, we had planned it. We'd scripted it. We developed the whole plan. He was to be my first producer mm. on a solo project. We got together and we talked. And uh, I remember he came to Los Angeles at Greater Bethany uh, Apostolic Church, and he was sharing. And Ricky Grundy and I went back to meet him. Ricky introduced me to him. And I had my first recording, the first wax album I ever recorded independently. And I took it to him, and I showed it to him. And I even told him, I said, I play with James Cleveland, da 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 da, -da. <laughs> And he looked at my album, and he said to me, this will speak for itself. So he took it, he listened to it, and... He had, would always invite me to come to Detroit to sit with him as he would work in the studio and things like that. Mm -hmm. I was able to visit him in his new home that he purchased even shortly before he passed. Okay. And, uh, we sat, we went down to his basement where he had his baby grand. Yeah. He played, oh my God, he played and we just talked. But we had plans. He was going to put me on some of the recordings that he was producing then and then introduced me as a lead singer and then introduced me as a solo artist. But he died before he had the opportunity to do that. So that picture was, I, I forget where we were actually, be honest with you, I forget where we were, but that picture is the last, I think the only picture that I had of he and I together. Yeah, mm. it, it's just such a, a, a picture of, of two great people um, and, and it's just amazing. You know, a lot of people don't even know you guys knew each other. Right. You know what I'm right. saying? So that's right. why I, I love photographs. I love pictures, um, because they tell stories all in themselves Amen. Absolutely. Um, about relationships and people. And, and that's, that's my founder. Thing is about. That's, that's your founder. That's my founder. Yeah, yeah. You know what I say about your founder? <laughs> yeah. He was a frustrated musician. <laughs> And I say that because 
<laughs> Let me put it this way. When I sat with him one-on-one -on -one and listened to him play the piano, I said, we've never heard you do that before. <laughs> and he said to me, he said, Calvin, I know what the church can embrace and what they can't. Okay. He said, I'll throw a little bit in there every now and then, but Thomas Whitfield, in my opinion, was one of those musicians who even the then church did not know how to fully appreciate. Right. I agree. He gave us what he could. I mean, he was, he wasn't just ahead of his time. He was a trendsetter. He, he was Thomas Whitfield. He had his own style. <laughs> Amen. Right. But the right. speed of this man, his agility on the keys, That's right. I'm like, y'all didn't hear what he could really That's do. Right. <laughs> right. He did You're right. He, he did what he yeah, did. Yeah, you did have to kind of go in that basement. He did what he really was allowed to do. <laughs> yes. Because some of the sounds, and I knew um, from, from a kid, he, uh, you know, I remember when he came to our church, um, and it seems like that's when the ministry really began to grow. Mm. Um, his ministry and the songs that we he was bringing to us, um, it was different. But you know, our church was always different. Um, but yeah, this PT was, was ahead, of, ahead of yeah. PT was always well, but way this ahead was of everybody different, else. Different, but we could embrace it because it was different, and we were expected to sing non-traditional right, you know, right. songs that everybody else sang. You know, right. Um, but uh, yeah, I could tell it, it was more in him listen. and that's when the company started and more productions yeah. and, right, you know, right. just, it just started going here and getting wider. Yeah. And what, what he poured into the company was nothing less than phenomenal, unique, one of a kind. There will never be that sound. Mm -mm again because it was the blending of the voices the movements you know the arrangements everything was so superb it was genius nothing but sheer genius divinely touched by god because he was a worshiper yes 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 and when when, when you put the heart of a worshiper on top of the unique talent that god gives oh my god and, you know, we didn't know all of that, um, you know, coming up. All we knew, you know, we didn't have praise and worship. We were right. still dealing with devotion. You know, that, <laughs> that was what, that was how we connected and got ready to service. Um, and then when Tommy said, put your hands up. We, okay. Yeah. You know, whatever he can. <laughs> put your hand, okay. Say, geez. Okay. Okay. You know, and, and it was something. And we all did whatever he said, too. Yeah. yeah. And, and you know what? Yeah. I have argued with many of my peers. That was our praise and worship. Mm -hmm. By another name. By another mm -hmm. name. There's no greater worship for Black people than I love the Lord. He Come heard on my now. cry. You know. Ah. <laughs> you know, and then, <laughs> then Richard came in and made it. I love the Lord, yep, you, know, was, yep, yep. you know, I mean, you know, when you think about Thomas Whitfield and uh, what, wait a minute, um, um, his, his arrangements of the hymns, mm -hmm. you know, nothing but the blood. Oh, how him. I love you, Jesus. Yeah. That's worship. That's praise. Hello. Let me say this to my black brothers and sisters. Don't you dare think that <laughs> white folk came up with that. <laughs> don't think that. Don't think that. Amen. Don't That's think all that. I have to say about that. You know, we our our foreparents. That's what kept them. That's right. That's why they survived. That's why they lived and they thrived because they worshiped God through the cries of their hearts. That's yes. Right. You know, yes. when they were singing, "Father, I stretch my hands to Thee, no other help I know." They that meant was that thing. Their worship and their praise. They, like you said, you used the word connection. They were connecting. Yes. To their God, yes. to the God who preserved them and brought them through. And yes. we, we should never forget that. And and I think that this is the time in history that 
again, and you know, you can go back to Reverend Charles. And if you ever needed the Lord, you sure do need him now. Mm -hmm. This is this is a it's time relevant. where we should be reconnecting. Yes. You know, um, getting that connection back because I think we kind of either took it for granted or, you know, just made it too common. And, you know, we, we didn't we didn't embrace our, our connection with the Lord. So that now, he can lead us and guide us. Now, here is where I may fall out with my elder peers. Hey, many of them nobody. still alive. You ain't gonna, you ain't gonna fall out with nobody. Don't Wait even I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> you, you the elder peer now, sweetie. Sorry to tell you. Just in case you didn't know. <laughs> but but I strive to be a connecting voice that say, Amen. Amen. Nothing is really wrong. Nothing is wrong. Everything is right. We, we mm -hmm. cannot be believers in God and believe that anything is out of time. Because according all to right, the word, right. there's a time for everything. That's everything. What the, that's, that's where what we the are, said. where we are is where we're supposed to be. All right. right now, right now. And we just have to realize God is with us in all of this. Oh, and yeah. I say that to say this, the gospel music industry is still in transition. Yes. But God has already has this thing planned out and fixed out. If you go back and study history, again, I did my own little research. Every 25 to 30 years in history, a new sound was introduced to gospel music. Precious Lord was first recorded in the, in the you know, books, 1937. Mm -hmm. He wrote okay. it before, but it was recorded in 1937. Andre Crouch, Walter, uh, Andre Crouch, Edwin Hawkins came on the scene right at 1967, 68, and 69. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Andre Crouch, the Kojics, Andre Crouch and the Disciples, 67. Oh, Happy Day was recorded in 68 and became a number one hit in 69. 30 years after Precious Lord. 1997, Kirk Franklin came out with Stomp, which opened the door for what we begin to call urban hip hop gospel music. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So now you had Andre Crouch, the father of modern gospel, Edwin Hawkins, the father of contemporary gospel, Thomas Dorsey, the father of gospel, black gospel music. And each of those sounds were introduced and were established just about 30 years apart. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I argue if history repeats itself, that means come 2027, there will be a new sound for gospel music. And right now we're in what I call the cusp of the transition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I argue, you know, we want the hymns to last forever, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> and they do. Technically, hymns will never cease to exist, technically, right. by the biblical right. definition. But the sound of hymns that we're used to, those hymns that were written in the 1600s, 1700s, 1800s, they cannot dominate forever, particularly not in commercial radio. Let's right, look at right. it. Okay. Uh, no sound can dominate forever. Not, but not what we must do is we must maintain the content of the gospel message. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But the sound can't, can't stay the same. That's even a violation of God's order. Okay. My favorite, one of my favorite passages in this area is in Acts chapter 13, verse 36, where it says, David served his generation. His generation. And then he died. Okay. And then okay. he died. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's right. Okay. The thing that everybody needs to do is make sure you're serving your generation as God has ordained you to serve it. All okay. right. And if you do that well, you will have a legacy that will live beyond you, but it will not dominate and prevail because what will be necessary 25 years from now on is different than what's necessary today. Right, mm -hmm. and, and I think it's just a thing that you build on. Absolutely. It's a building block. Right, so, right. Um, right. And I talked to Nash Schaefer, who was a great historian um, in Chicago, and he, he told me, he said, well, Sandra, you know that um, 10 years, Detroit had 10 years. And he started giving me all kinds of, of names of people who just had their sound 10 years. 
10 years and then they, they died 10 years and then they died, you know, so it, it's, it's right along with what you're saying. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Right mm-hmm. along. I, I get it. I get yeah. it. I yeah. get it. But mm-hmm. we're just building. Like we're building yeah. on, we can't sing Maddie's music per se, or every song, every day. Right. But we can build on the sound mm-hmm. that she mm-hmm. developed. Mm-hmm. And again, look at what happened. Thomas Whitfield, his time. He also kept alive the hymns. Yes, he did. But he rearranged them. He rearranged mm-hmm. them. Oh, Happy Day is really an adaptation of an old hymn. Yep. Yes, made it, yes, it is. Still. Made it attractive for that Absolutely. generation. Peace Be Still, same thing. Yep. Look at what Anita Wilson did with Jesus Will. Jesus Will. James <laughs> Cleveland wrote that song uh, uh, back in the 50s, you know. You know, the, the drinkers the recorded it. Several yeah. people recorded it, yeah. but it came back. Any good song lives beyond its composer mm-hmm. because that's the nature of God. That's but the, nature. the sound changes. Um, any of any on here that have children or grandchildren, particularly your grandchildren, your <laughs> grandchildren cannot fully relate to what you related to you when you were their age. Okay. Our young people have so much more than we had in the past. Think we walk to school, they got to ride. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It, it's, it's just Down the corner. That alone is different. Time up. all together, just a different time. And you have to allow each generation that. their freedom to do what they need to do. That's you know? but now what I, But what I always like to do is I like to be all inclusive. My, my grandbabies, get a chance to hear all of it. Yes. I don't let them just, you, you're not just hearing the, the new artists, the top 10, yes. you know, they they have an appreciation for all of it because I feel it's necessary for them to be exposed to all of it and let them know it all has its place. Absolutely. And so they have a, a music appreciation yes. different than some of their counterparts. Yes. yes. Yeah. And, that's and, and 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 so, now one thing I have noticed with them, they can't last more than three or four minutes with a song. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, back in the day, Donald Bells would 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 uh, uh would make a song that lasts for twelve minutes, and we were there all twelve. You know? <laughs> but, but the young people, they're like, "Give me three, I'm good with three to four and, minutes." And so, ask the reason why. Why. Wow. Radio has conditioned us for That's that. Right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Commercial radio. They're doing the standard this. Standard time. They're doing three this. and a half to four and a half minutes. Mm-hmm. Standard time. It. That's it. They're Cut your song it. down. Even even when I recorded, even with uh, when uh, Buster, um, who did I say my producer was? <laughs> Lost <laughs> Williams. <laughs> when we recorded "Living Me Jesus," they say that's been my greatest hit as a solo artist. Living Me Jesus is about seven minutes long. Okay. And I said, unless it's a special thing, they're not playing a seven minute they're song. Not playing no, radio. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh-uh. no, sir. You no, got to cut that down. So, so again, that's why I'm but, saying. But how do you feel about someone who is not necessarily saved, not necessarily um, even no, no God, but they're programming the music and they're telling, uh, you know, they're defining what gospel music is, you know, okay. what the industry. And it okay. could be businessmen, business people. You, ju- you just said it. You just said it. Industry, synonymous with the word business. It's a business. Right. And that's, that's why I said earlier. It's I'm not healed. ministry. It's business. It's business. When I was signed with. It, when take, I was, it takes a you, Sandy, for it to be ministry. Yeah, it takes yeah. a pastor to for it to be ministry. Mm-hmm. Us being on air, you being on air. Yes. Face Facebook Live, YouTube, whatever we do, Zoom in, and we make it ministry and not commercial, and not commercial, and not business. The as person, you the person who influenced me most when it came to when it comes to the ministry of music, 
even though I understood it, but this person took it to another level was Lynette Hawkins Stevens. Okay. 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 I watched Lynette Hawkins come to Southern California in Santa Ana and she was to be in concert. This was during the time her little sis album was out. Okay. Uh, our baby sis, I think it's called baby sis. Um, and she was practicing, she was doing her sound check the day before. Because we have this thing called Santa Ana winds, yeah. and it's really, it's really harsh on you. She lost her voice that night during the rehearsal, but she came to the concert and she pushed her way through. Here's what impressed me most about her. Afterwards, she stood in the front of the sanctuary to shake hands with people as they were coming in because mm -hmm. she's Lynette Hawkins. She was a Hawkins. They right, were shaking right. hands. One young lady came up to her and she had, I mean, she had a desperate need. Lynette told her workers, no more people coming in line to shake her hand. She took that young lady, went to the front row of the sanctuary, sat her down. Lynette went in her purse, got her Bible out and started ministering to her. When I that's saw what, that, nah. I said, that's what this is really that's what all about. This whole yes. thing yes. is about. Because that, that, music, so me. that music will soften your heart. Yes, it, it will soften. Even if you listen to rock and roll or, or, or whatever, R&B, music will soften your heart. Certainly. And then once you get the right words and the right melodies together, it really, it, it, make, it breaks up that fallow ground. So yes. now you're ready for yes. somebody to take you a little bit mm -hmm. further by showing me in the Bible, well, well, well this, believe on the Lord and thou shalt, well, who is the Lord? Yes. Then you tell them, you're able to mm -hmm. tell them. There, there, there should be major altar calls in our gospel music concerts. Yeah. Let, 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 let me say this, Pastor. Whitfield Company in our early days, we, we used to have one because we had a ministerial staff, mm -hmm. uh, uh, evangelists and so forth. I was part of that staff. And we, we used to have, and Minister Whitfield was uh, basically chastised and rebuked. That's right. By That's some right. pastors. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. We and didn't they pay told you. Him, we didn't pay you to come in here for that. That we ain't what we think. Yep. That's and right. And Thomas stopped. He yep. stopped. Mm -hmm. I was. He, said, that we was not, we didn't he, he told. All of that. He told him he was out. He told him that we were out of order. Wow. wow. Yep. Sure did. I was sure a part of a, a choir called the Crusade for Christ Choir, um, which eventually became a church. And uh, Virgil D. Patterson was the. He's still the pastor. He's still my bishop. Um, he had a gospel group, his three children called the Patterson Trio, uh, very popular back in the what 80s, uh, 80s and early 90s. But he started this choir and he would never do, he would never allow the choir to do appearances. Mm -hmm. Whenever he was called, he said, if you I want us to be. come, we must do the entire service because the highlight of our concerts is the invitation. See, our our main purpose for even going around singing is to win souls. So, mm -hmm. you know, we, we had that, I'll say the entertainment piece, the professionalism, we sounded, mm -hmm. we were professional, we had to have our music together. But the purpose was souls being saved. And you we know, never we know, we had gotten to the point, um, again, I have it on, on film. We, we got to the point, you know, years ago where a lot of the pastors weren't so concerned about um, that, but it was who is doing the, you know, um, they didn't want you to be more attractive than them. Than them. Okay, come on now, tell the truth. I said it. Yeah, that is true. Because <laughs> I got it on film. They yeah. said it. They said it was not. This is that's not your yeah. plan. They didn't want you. And and Reverend Cleveland came had that over and over and over again. And it was like they did not want him to be more attractive than yeah. the pastor of the church. Yeah, you know. And people have a problem with that. But yeah, um, we're gonna have to really, really um, <laughs> get together. And Amen. I'm going to work on this. So <laughs> I, I, 
you know. But do what you do, Sam. Do what you do. Do what you do. <laughs> but you know, I was even thinking about you said something that made me think about back in the day, we we listened to the whole album. That's how I know that there are some songs that they don't play on the radio that's just as good. Right. That that might be even better because we turned the album over. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we listened to the next song. We put the, the needle wherever we wanted to, you know. <laughs> and, and the B side, there were 12 songs on the on the on the album, 10 songs on the album. Uh, or unless it was the Donald Bell song, it, it might just be four on one side, <laughs> right. two on another. Because they, I mean. <laughs> But you had at least 30, 40 minutes worth of music there, yeah. you know, but now people just want to say, um, I'm just going to give this EP or this, this single and that's it. And those mm-hmm. albums kind of all told stories. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'll, I'll, when I, if anyone goes back and listen to the four projects that I did on CGI, if you listen to them from beginning to end, you will find a pattern that I attempted to always follow. And that is the order of service of a Sunday morning service in my Baptist church. Okay. I grew up in a Baptist church. So I always had a song that was a call to worship. We did the devotion, worship and praise. I even did an offertory song. Okay. I even even did in my home church. We used to have pastors. The pastor would just say words. I would do a song of exhortation. That's right. And I'd even do a song for the announcements. And I always, and that's the way I ordered because my thought was, if somebody sits down and listens to this whole CD, I want them to have a worship a Sunday morning service. worship experience. Okay. Okay. That's what I that's what I went after. And there was one young man who actually picked up on it. He hit me up on Facebook one time and he said, You know what? You, you your CDs follow this pattern. I said, You got it. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and even yeah. even your your secular artists would always put a gospel song on this on their on their album. And we would find our way to the gospel song yeah. on the album. But they put them there, you know, but now again, I only, you know, um, my, my label is only telling me to put two songs together, three songs together. So I, that's, that's the best I got. You know? Well, you know, the good thing about today with the way things are going and uh-huh, with the internet, uh-huh, uh-huh. We, can create so, we can create so much more and not be limited. Indies. to yeah, anything right. but what the inspiration of God gives us and when Amen. we trust God Amen. He provide he provides the provision for the vision you know that come on now right. and right. So and, if, but we have to train our people because so many especially the older ones are not that familiar with the internet and they're true. afraid because people true. have told them don't go on the internet facebook is fake book and blah 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 and you know they they i can't go I, I can't go here and it's like please go on here i need you to go on here i need you to like i need you to share this yeah. on your page mm-hmm. so that other people can hear this you know and we need to mm-hmm. get that message and I, I i i think i believe that even this time this pandemic is going to help it work. Is helping it yes. work. Yes. Uh, it's all you working know, together. Romans yeah, 8 if you remember the We're good. We're good. If you remember the television, there were saints calling it the one-eyed devil. Yep. And we don't want that. <laughs> or the show. And now I grew up, ministries are, are, are stri- striving and struggling and to get on it. That's right. I, think it's time for the body of Christ to also recognize that in the earth, we should be the most creative people because Amen. our God is the creator. That's the right. creator. That's right. So I but think I've, about what would have happened if we had had um, the saints involved in movies, the saints involved in television. Things would have gone a whole nother way. And mm-hmm. that's the way it's supposed to be. Mm-hmm. We are the, the salt. The earth mm-hmm. is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And we're the seasoning, the salt, the preserving. We, we keep it. it from spoiling. That's we're the job. ones who are supposed to be doing it. Come we, on we, now. So we, we got to do our keep, job. We got to keep giving that message and stop thinking that we're called to have bless me services every Sunday morning when we gather somewhere. No, right. we're supposed to be, be we're supposed to be being built up and empowered so that even on our jobs, when we, we go Monday through Friday, we're to be the ones that's taken over. Watch that's this. Right. Set this thing. 
And don't nobody know we doing it because we in our closets praying. Huh. <laughs> we're praying behind closed doors and in the open, being, we are being living. rewarded. It. Yes, right. Yeah, right. yeah. Right. Right. Come on now. Yeah, that's scripture. Right. That's scripture. It is. So I believe that these times, if we look at it rightly, um, stop listening to oh Lord Jesus. Ooh, come I'm on, come on with it. Come stop on with listening it. to popular voices. Okay. Come on okay. now. Okay. Okay. Stop listening to popular voices just because there has been a presence. Listen for the spirit of God in your Come on own now. soul. That was read, my Bible study read today. Read the word for yourself. <laughs> that was my Bible right. study today. <laughs> Become acquainted with God's voice for yourself because there's something yes. that you're supposed to do that nobody yes. else can do. That nobody else can do. That's yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. And and you, I, all of us, everybody that's even listening are here for a reason. And perhaps you were, you're supposed to just put this on your page mm -hmm. yes, so yes. somebody else can hear it. You know, mm -hmm. who's, to, who's to say, but you're not here just because you had nothing else to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How about you know, this? You didn't have anything else to do, so you could be here. <laughs> okay. Right. God, he, God, God right. cleared he, your calendar. He cleared. The, he cleared, he cleared your calendar. Honey. Uh, no, that's right. That he know how to clear calendar. Listen, he cleared he it real home. good. Listen, listen. He you said, at the house because you ain't got nowhere else to be everybody. but at the house. Yes. <laughs> It's oh, time to say yeah. like and share. Yep, <laughs> like yep. and share, yeah. I need to talk to Richard because I, I there's there's this ministry idea about um, worship and praise through photographing. Okay. Every art is an expression of God's creative ability. Right. And for your eye to be able to see something and capture it through an instrument we call a camera and then right. represent that there is a worship experience and a praise experience behind that. Yes. Mm. I, I, I'm going to be talking to you about that because I think you want some of your pictures, correct? No, 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 no. I <laughs> I'm, I'm just messing with you. <laughs> yeah. I, and I, re I really don't. I, I've, I've been having this desire in my heart to set up a gallery in the sanctuary. Okay. So that when you look at pictures and you see the creative genius of God, you see the color of God. You see all of that. You see mountains and you see fields. You see faces. Right. You see right. you you see details. Too mm. often we put God over here. God is responsible for this whole thing. Yeah. 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 And we got to see God in all of it. So so that's something I want to talk to you about. But wow, music, gospel music, that's why we have music. That's right. We, we that's have right. music because it how I'm how can I say this? It gives God a more tangible dwelling place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. God, there's a scripture in the Bible that says God rides on the winds of the on the wings of the wind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In the yes. Psalms. Yes. Well, guess what I believe those wings are? Not the only ones, but are sound. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. God rides yeah. on sound. And mm -hmm. there is they're learning today that music is is a wonderful therapy. It's wonderful it therapy is. for autism. It's wonderful therapy for healing. And, yes. And yes. you know, we've seen it in the Bible. Yes. You know, they called for David when Saul was dis was troubled by a distressing spirit. Right. And, and you can tell, you can tell there is there are spirits connected to music. Yes. You yes. can listen to certain songs and they'll take you up or they'll take you down. So yes. you know it's or it's, have you crazy. Or have you crazy. That's right. That's right. And have yes. you think that one crazy thought? You be like, I wonder why you're acting crazy. What, mm -hmm. are you, what are you letting go <laughs> in your ear? Yep. What did you let loose over here? You Thank know, you. so yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have to put the right kind of music so that it can be the soundtrack of people's yes. lives. Yes. You know, but if we put the music out there, then they can enjoy it. And they don't even know that there is therapeutic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I encourage. I encourage songwriters, artists, musicians, listen, don't let the industry dictate your ministry. Mm -hmm. Somebody 
who may never turn on a commercial radio needs to hear the gift that God right. has placed in you. In you. Mm -hmm. somebody in a hospital bed, somebody in a convalescent home, they need to hear what God has invested in you. So whatever you do, go forth in ministry. Don't wait on industry. People don't wait on the industry. Do what God has gifted you to do. Just put it out there. Just And it is so. People. It is so. Just share it. Yes, yes. And yes. even that. That may be the thing that God uses to open the industry door. Because like I said, I wasn't going after a contract. It came right. looking for me. Right. <laughs> Most of the anointed people did not go out looking. And that's why, you know, it, it, it just, it was there. It was an avenue, but they just wanted to get their music out. Yes. What was in here, yeah. they wanted to get it out so that people could hear. Yeah. That's all. That's My all. greatest testimony about Reverend James Cleveland, he called me and asked me to write for him. He called See? me and asked me to write for the messengers. He would call me and ask me for material. But this was after he heard a, a group that I had organized. He heard my brother and I sing. He told my brother and I said, you all could be the next O'Neill twins. My brother was tragically killed. Uh, we say prematurely, but all things are in God's timing. Um, but he never lost touch with me. And he called. I received the phone call. I wasn't going after nothing. No. I wasn't going after nothing. Right. Only thing I did is I put together a group so that I could do what God had called me to do. There you go. And, and just like, you know, the, the Voices of the Tabernacle, they just had an Easter concert. Yeah. And Carmen Murphy came to the concert and said, I have to record you. What's wow. the name of your choir? Well, we, we really don't even have a name. <laughs> okay, you're going to be the, the mighty voices of Tabernacle. That's what you're going to be. Wow. And they didn't do that to record. They were just having a concert because music was in it. Yes. But again, we could talk all day. Mm -hmm. um, we got to end at some point, but we're going to do we're going to expound on this, uh, Pastor. So just look for the phone call. Just <laughs> Amen. Look Look for Amen. the phone call. We're going to expound. The team is coming together. Yeah, yeah. We, tell, and tell, and tell Shirley. Um, we got to get Jeffrey. We got to get Bishop Woods. We got to yes. get, we're calling the cavalry together. And we're going to do this so that the people can mm -hmm. understand um, where the music is from, how the music mm -hmm. is, and what it's supposed to do. And we'll put this on. We'll do a Zoom and, and call it a day. Um, Tell please. your Shirley Johnson that I said a hello and I called her name on the air. <laughs> she, 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 is she the best? Is she the best? She's awesome. She's awesome. the best. She's awesome. the best. So let's go around and let's do um, a round robin and we'll give our final thoughts. Uh, Jackie, uh, then Richard, and then Pastor uh, Pastor Rome. Well, Pastor, I'm just delighted to have met you on today and just know you've been a blessing to me on today. And I say amen to everything you said. Amen. 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 Check off, check off. God bless you, <laughs> sir. And look forward to seeing you being an active member of the team. <laughs> okay. Well, again, I would like to thank God, thank the Lord for this opportunity. I thank sure, uh, Sandy for giving me this opportunity to be with you. Bernard, Pastor Bernard, I know you don't know this, but I am an unofficial, official member of the Gospel Workshop of America, LA chapter. Uh, and he's over the LA chapter. <laughs> we, we didn't bring any of that out, so you gotta to come that? back. <laughs> we said nothing about any of that. <laughs> Well, I'm gonna give I'm gonna give Pastor a chance. What what is one thing you said you were going to do, always at a GMA LA chapter event when you became the chapter representative? I will always call the names of Reverend James Cleveland, our founder, Rodina Preston, our most beloved chapter emeritus re chapter rep rep representative, and the name of Edna Tatum, the there voice. There you are. <laughs> because those are the three legs that this chapter stand upon. Amen. For them, we not we would not be who and what we are. 
That's why. Amen. Praise the Lord. I enjoyed you today, and you Thank are you. a pastor and a teacher. You, we talk Amen. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Bless you. I'm, I'm just grateful for the opportunity to be on this platform to share what God has given me and pray that it has awesome. been a blessing. Sandy, I always stand in awe of what you do, not only your work in journalism, if you will, but as, <laughs> as a radio announcer. And then I watch you when you be directing the choir. You direct masterfully. <laughs> uh, so I stand in awe of you. Richard, yeah. God bless you and all of your work. Love your photography. It's just Thank fantastic. You. you capture the best side of me. And then to <laughs> Pastor Jacqueline, what a pleasure it is to meet you. And bless you to know that you were part of the Whitfield Singers. Oh my God. Still oh my is. God. Oh my Still God. Is. Y'all so an original awesome. member. Listen, that's <laughs> God bless you all. Hey Bernard, I wanted you to know I am representing the chapter. I'm wearing my red and black today. <laughs> I see. I see. You know, we just celebrated Reverend's birthday. Yeah. I saw you. I was gonna I was gonna mention that 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 was a great program. I enjoyed the pastor uh, from Las Vegas, uh, Herb Segman. Oh, uh, Reverend DJ. Reverend Hayden. Hayden. Well, anyway, that if they want to listen to that program, that is www.powerbliss.com James slash James Cleveland. Yes. That's www.powerbliss.com James slash James Cleveland. It's and still go ahead on, and put uh, that, put that, make sure you put that in the chat. All right. So that they can, um, the people can click and go there. Yeah, that's a live link. They can just click on it and go right to it. Right, right, right. But um, we, we just really want to say thank you, thank you, thank you for all that you've done anytime. <laughs> um, I, I have very, very, very fine memories of you. Um, and, and one was even when I asked to, um, to interview you. You didn't change words. You said, where are we going? <laughs> where, where, where are we going to do this at? And had it not been for Edna Tatum, who you said, you know, the, the Los Angeles chapter stands on, um, I would not have done that ministry. So I, I thank God for that. We've got the same, some of the same connections and, mm -hmm. you know, so um, we're, we're kindred. Bishop Woods is really, he's going to hold me to it because he said, Sandy, we have witnessed. They heard you <laughs> say you were going to get us together. <laughs> so, I am going to do this um, again. Look forward to the call. Um, you, you're just a blessing to the body. And you have, when, when, when is your show on? Let the people know about your, your picture. Oh, wow. Well, right now we do our regular Sunday morning celebrations at 11 o'clock. Pacific Standard Time, and then on Wednesdays at 7.30 Pacific Standard Time, we're on with our uh, biblical inspiration. Ever, ever now and then, every now and then, <laughs> on Tuesdays and Thursdays, you kind of have to just watch my Facebook page to see when I'm going to come on other times through the week, because I stopped doing it regularly. I got so busy. Yeah, yeah. With, it's a uh, lot. Yeah, you know, with, they with, think you can just throw these things together. Yeah, yeah, and it, it takes lot. time and post-production work and things like that, and I stay very active in that. So uh, it, as you stay uh, abreast of what's going on on Calvin B. Rome, Calvin B. Rome, Facebook, not Calvin Bernard Rome. Calvin Bernard Rome is my artist page, and I don't do a lot of interaction on that. That's primarily for telling about new music and so forth, but on Calvin B. Rome, that's where everything happens so follow us there and um you'll be in the know of different things that we're doing all right well that's Amen. what we want to know that's what we want to know um what's going on we try to keep up with what's going on in um los angeles and california and just the gospel community um we want to thank everyone for tuning in today it's it's just been it's been a blessing to me i hope it's been a blessing to you because amen this, this has blessed me i kind me. of got you know all about that and i went for myself today <laughs> <laughs> I went in for my awesome. today. Usually, you, usually you're concerned delicious. about the people, but today I went in for myself. So um, I just want to thank everybody because you don't have to do it. 
but we thank you thank you so much for being faithful listeners and please like and share this because if you enjoy Amen. it someone else will enjoy this as well and they just don't know about it just like you didn't know about the broadcast so um, we're here every Tuesday um, 5 to 7 um, and that's uh, Eastern time and Pacific it'll be 2, two o'clock in the afternoon mm -hmm. so um, again you at the house just tune us in uh, we'll be right here waiting for <laughs> we'll be right here waiting for you. but we're gonna you will hear about this soon we're gonna get all of, uh, of these people together and we're gonna just start having um, symposiums right here online so that you can participate as well because the, our people perish for the lack of knowledge and it's amen not just biblical knowledge is about knowledge about your history where you come from and why you do certain things that you do. So right. we'll be right here for you. We love you. And there's absolutely Amen. nothing you can do about it. Amen. Pastor Ron, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for being you. Thank you Bless so you. much. Thank Amen. You. All right. Well, I love you. There's nothing you can do about it. They love you too. Night, 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 night. 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 <laughs> Sandy, I'm glad I didn't have anything else to do today. <laughs> yeah, you at the house. <laughs> Stand for you.
you for listening to The Sandy Rose Show with your host, Sandy Rose. If you have enjoyed this broadcast, won't you consider liking and sharing this with a friend or family member? We'd love for you to share it on your Facebook page. Thank you for tuning to WVTC Radio Detroit. Remember to like and share this broadcast with a friend. We are WVTC, winning victory through Christ.